When talking about age-dependent changes in the skin, the sort of most obvious one that we think of and that we've all seen and might be experiencing ourselves um, is wrinkles. And one kind of good thing to note if you're worried about your own wrinkles is that 100% of people will get wrinkles sometime within their life, right? And so it's not a unique problem. And there's some particular reasons for this. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, some of the changes that happen to your skin that can lead to the appearance of wrinkles. And the first is that there's just a decrease in the number of skin cells as we age. And that is kind of a direct result of a decrease in the number of mitotic cells in the stratum basale. And so if you remember from the previous lecture, the stratum basale is the layer of the epidermis at the very bottom, the innermost layer. And it's the layer where new skin cells are generated from, right? And so the level of mitosis in this particular layer of the epidermis is very high. Um, but as we age, telomere shortening within these cells promotes senescence or a stoppage of cell division, um, which ends up decreasing the number um, of skin cells that are made by the stratum basale. And if you can't replace some of the older skin cells with new ones, that can lead to some age-dependent changes. Additionally, there's a decrease in the layer of subcutaneous fat underneath the dermis. Um, so less subcutaneous fat um, <coughs> can actually lead to kind of a, um, a decreased plumpness in the skin, and that can um, result in the appearance of wrinkles, or at least exacerbate the appearance of them. Right, And so less skin cells and less subcutaneous fat um, are some parts of the process, but really most um, the most important age-related change that causes wrinkles is actually occurring in the dermis or that thick middle layer of the skin. And inside the dermis, as we age, there's a dramatic decrease in the amount of elastin and collagen molecules. And so as we talked about in the previous lecture, elastin and collagen are forms of connective tissue. And they're really important for um, providing some <laughs> flexibility um, as well as pliability um, to the skin in the dermis, right? And so they're strong, but they're stretchy and bendy. And so they can resist um, pressures and forces, and they can actually bounce back. Right? They provide some of that sort of like ability of you to touch down on your skin and for it not to stay indented, right? It can bounce back. Um, and that's basically due to the properties of these two molecules. Um, and you'll notice that here in the younger skin, there is sort of a definite pattern of elastin and collagen molecules, as well as some other types of connective tissue, hyaluronic acid um, as a molecule, that keep younger skin <laughs> basically supported at the layer of the dermis. You've got this nice crosshatch pattern. It provides a nice cushiony kind of springy mattress that your epidermis can lay on top of and your skin has the ability to bounce back. Um, but over time, what happens is elastin and collagen deplete um, within the cell and they're not actually um, replenished, right? And so that loss of collagen and elastin leads to a loss of that nice mesh work. Right, and anywhere where there's now kind of a, a loss of support, a wrinkle can form, right? Because normally collagen and elastin would be there holding up that piece of the epidermis, keeping it nice and smooth and flat. But as we lose these molecules, we lose some of that support for the epidermis. And those indentations can form, and that's what gives us the appearance of wrinkles. In addition to kind of losing elastin and collagen, there's also some improper what's called cross-linking between these two molecules that actually leads to an increase in the strength of the molecules, but a decrease in the elasticity or the flexibility of them, right? And so it's important that the skin or this dermal layer be both strong and elastic. But as we age, that elasticity actually decreases. And so when you look at the way collagen should be organized, you can see that here on the left image, <coughs> it makes sort of a nice periodic pattern. It looks a little bit uh, like 
a spring that if you compressed from the bottom and top would be able to easily bounce back because it's periodic, it's organized, um, and it's cross-linked into such a way that, that this will um, work out. However, when we look at the collagen in an um, in older individual, it starts to adopt this kind of disorganized and random and tangled appearance. And if you imagine pressing down on this collagen organization from the top and the bottom, it's not clear how it would bounce back, right? And that's sort of the problem, is that without having a nice organized collagen structure, uh, skin just doesn't have the, the elasticity that it used to, um, and wrinkles can form as a result. <clears throat> and one thing that's very important to realize about um, aging and age-related changes to the skin is that it's highly, highly um, affected by the environment because it's so exposed to the environment. It's on the outside of the body. It's dealing with different environmental factors um, all the time. And the biggest environmental contributor to aging of the skin is UV light. Right? And so 90%, in fact, of all the time-dependent environmental damage to the skin is caused by exposure to the sun or UV light. Um, and <laughs> this long-term damage caused by UV light is known as photoaging, right? So photo being light and aging. This is an, um, a type of aging caused specifically by UV light from the sun. And while we might think that the UV light is affecting the epidermis or that outer layer, it actually is really affecting that middle layer once again. Um, most of the changes related to photoaging occur in the dermis, um, so that large connective tissue layer in the middle. And <laughs> what happens is that UV light can actually damage, once again, collagen and elastin. And as I described on the previous slide, damaging those two molecules can lead to a loss of elasticity as well as wrinkles and a particular um, condition known as telangiectasia, which you can actually see illustrated up here, which is just a discoloration of the skin. And it's possible that the mechanism by which uh, UV light can do this um, and can actually damage collagen and elastin is by generating reactive oxygen species. And so it's likely that ROS are generated by uh, UV light and then <coughs> those reactive oxygen species are what actually causes damage to the biomolecules in the dermis, right? So the collagens and the elastins and leads to their ultimate loss of elasticity. And in addition to um, just these changes to collagen and elastin, exposure to UV light um, at an excessive amount or repeated sunburns can cause damage to the pigment containing cells in the epidermis or the melanocytes and lead to a condition or a cancer called melanoma. 